we are now conducting uh, we are now participating in this program which deals with the dissemination of knowledge regarding indian venomous snakes snake bite and its management as we all know snake bite the very word snake bite is going to still uh, stir uh, chills down our spine and that being said it is something that is quite avoidable it is an accident and we just need to be wary of certain uh, snakes and be mindful of what we do particularly in places that are prone to snakes venomous ones right with this short prelude i think we can move into the presentation next slide please Next slide, please. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So, what is what is venom for a snake, and what is it used for? That is the primary question which hits our head. Snake venom is not a weapon of choice. It doesn't use venom as a weapon against people. That is the first thing that we need to know, and. the major use of snake venom is in two contexts one is self defense and the other thing is feeding right if a snake bite happens to a person 100% it is a bite that has been delivered out of a self defense context no snake is going to perceive human being as a prey and bite of person right this has not been documented so far we are not on the uh, list of prey species of snakes right that is rats mice frogs lizards and so to speak that is the group of animals which the snakes feed on we human beings we always get bit because of a retaliatory action by the snake it is in a self defense context that bites happen to us next slide please right so the nature of snake venom and its uses are of manifold right it doesn't use the snake it doesn't use its venom just on its enemies just on its prey the principal use and purpose of venom for a venomous snake is to aid itself in digestion right that is the most uh, important use for snake venom venomous snakes have venom mainly to aid in the breaking down or lysis of the tissue of the prey species so that it gets digested fast and in this slide in this photographic slide you have you see a photos of two different kinds of snakes to your left you see a viper which is holding a frog in its mouth and to your right you see a big python that is just resting after a meal right so imagining a hypothetical situation wherein we are comparing two snakes one venomous and one non venomous both of same size and both having fed on a same kind of a prey item say a rat or any other prey right the venomous snake is going to digest the prey far more quickly when compared to the non venomous snake this is simply because venom aids, aids in the lysis or in the breaking down of the tissues and other body parts of the prey that it has eaten it helps in digestion and that is the principal use of venom for a snake next slide right so if we are not one of the prey items of the snake why should we worry about snake bite this is the next question that that's going to face us it is because snakes also bite people in self defense as i told you earlier this is majorly prevalent in certain uh, facets in certain aspects of our country mainly in rural india where there are lots of agriculture and farm lands where these snakes including venomous ones like cobras and vipers they are very much at home in these rice paddies and as we all know farm workers people also uh, work alongside and sadly when they step on the snake or when they put their hand or feet near the snake they don't see the presence of the snake there they get bit right snakes are animals which are bereft of limbs they do not have any hind limb or fore limb and uh, the only defense that they have at their command is their teeth their uh, their mouth so they can defend 
from any potential adversary or operator only by means of biting. Right? So if we understand these very basics of uh, uh, snake behavior, we can very well avoid snake bites. Next slide, please. Right. So snake bite incidents in India, as I told you, mostly they happen in the rural areas that are dominated by croplands and agricultural fields. Some snakes are non-venomous. Non-venomous snakes are also very much present in the fields and farmlands. Sadly, venomous snakes are also present in fields and farmlands. And most of the time, the victims are, uh, they tend to be males, which are uh, within the age of the working group, that is around 20 to 50 years. And most of the bites typically happen in the extremities of the body, like the hand or the feet. These are some basic statistics regarding snake bite that one need to know. Next slide, please. Okay. Now that is only an Indian scenario. If if we are looking at uh, a, 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 a global scenario, a pan global scenario, half of the world's snake bite, half of the world's snake bite statistic that's happening around the world is right here in India. Our country is responsible for at least 50% of all snake bites that, that, that happens around the globe. It's not a very happy situation to be with, but sadly that is the prevailing reality, right? So if we focus our effort on mitigating the snake bite and uh, related complications and morbidities, we can bring down effectively the global snake bite statistics if we focus on this one aspect in this one country that's our own country. Next slide, please. Right. Most of the snake bites happen, um, happen at night. That is because Many snakes in India, especially the venomous ones, are night active species, which are called nocturnal snakes. That is to say, to give you some examples, venomous snakes such as crates, it's related to cobras and coral snakes. I'll be showing, uh, I'll be depicting them photographically in the slides to come, but just to give you some prelude and ideas preliminarily. Uh, vipers, they are all active during nighttime. Crates, they are active during nighttime. And, uh, that is why we have most of the medical emergencies with snake bites that are typically happening at night. And one more important reason is that many people sadly do not have the habit of carrying torchlights at night in rural in the rural sector. And unfortunately, many of them tend to step on snake or otherwise disturb the snake and provoke it into biting them. That's why that's how snake bites happen mostly. Next slide, please. Right. So what this venom is all about, what is the uh, nature or use of the snake venom? It's actually a very, very complex cocktail of a lot of substances, including uh, proteins, peptides, and other uh, nucleotides. Several types of toxins can be found and can be decoded from snake venom. We are just uh, started to scratch the surface as well uh, as far as Indian venomous snakes, venom toxinology, studies are concerned right and of late it has been established by the medical fraternity that several isolated compounds and active principles that have been derived from the snake venom are uh, used as medicine they have a lot of therapeutic usages right these are some interesting aspects that have uh, recently been uh, found out and revealed through uh, research on venoms and proteomics right one example is the cobra toxin that is a, a, a compound, a medicine, that's a painkiller, basically. It's derived from the venom, from components of the venom of cobra, right? That's, that shows how much uh, beneficial, at least indirectly, snake venom can be put to use in medicine and therapeutics. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So India has nearly 300 different kinds of snakes and 65 to 70 of them are venomous ones, right? 
globally, if we look at the global figure, at least 10% of the uh, snake diversity is found in India. And most of the front fanged venomous snake, I'll be talking about these technicalities in greater detail in the subsequent slides. The front fanged venomous snakes fall into two broad families. One is Elapidae and the other thing is Viperidae. Viperids as well as the uh, Elapids that are cobras and crates. Could we go to the slide please? So apart from the front fanged venomous snakes, which are cobras and crates, we also have rear fanged species such as the mildly venomous snake. Now, what is this term mildly venomous means? It means that they have a toxic saliva, which is not as potent as the toxins present in either a cobra or a viper, so to speak. But this species, these species of snakes have toxins which are potent enough to immobilize or paralyze or uh, kill their intended prey species, like small birds or rats or mice or lizards or frogs, but are otherwise harmless and inconsequential on a human on an adult human, right? So if these species of snakes, if they bite a person, we wouldn't uh, go into any sort of uh, life-threatening danger. But their bites are are going to cause harm to small prey items, small prey species of these snakes. That kind of snakes are known as the mildly venomous snakes, right? The mildly venomous snakes have uh, certain adaptations in their fangs, including their position and their structure, so as to allow their uh, different kind of duvernoid glands and other specific features which are peculiar to the mildly venomous snakes. In India, we have many groups of mildly venomous snakes, including the famous green tree snake or the green mind snake that we see in the picture, as well as the keelbacks or some groups of related to water snakes. And we also have others like cat snakes and the uh, and some species of uh, freshwater snakes in India all these species cause mild symptoms but are otherwise of no fatal consequence of no great danger to adult human beings because these are mildly venomous snakes next slide please so these kinds of snakes they typically both wrap around as well as envenomate their prey and the fact that they are back fanged snakes or they have rear fangs situated not in the front of the upper jaw but at the rear end also predisposes them to uh, bite and chew on the victim uh, repeatedly so as to properly envenomate and then swallow the prey whole. Next slide, please. Right. So these are the anatomical differences that are present between a front fanged venomous snake, that is a viper that's shown in this picture, as well as a back fanged or mildly venomous snakes that is shown in the picture below. So the one on the top represents a viper, that's a front fang species. The one below represents a, a boiga or a cat snake, which is a mildly venomous snake. So as we can see, the position, the size of the fang, as well as the glands and associated uh, orifices, they all differ between the front fang and the back fang snake. Next slide. So which is the most dangerous snake of India? That's, that is to say, which are the most medically important snakes of India? It's a very complex title and it, it needs us to wet through a lot of factors and probabilities, right? We have many kinds of venomous snakes, like the sea snakes, like the coral snakes, like the pit vipers and king cobras. These are species of venomous snakes that are found in India, but are highly restricted in their distribution. They're not found throughout the country and chance of them running into conflict with people or people tending to uh, chance upon them are very, very low. These are very rare snakes, which are not, not quite adept at living in and around human habitations, but are, but are those which are technically venomous and yes, they are found in India. So this group of snakes, the so-called medically unimportant, but venomous snakes of India, are quite diversified. As I told you, we have close to 65 or 70 species of venomous snakes in our country. Of them, not all of them are, uh, are, are medically important. We have only four species which takes that place. Next slide, please. OK, 
can we move to the next slide please we'll stop at this slide yeah fine uh, so as i told you there are four major venomous snakes that are found in our country which are very widespread and which are medically important species and these four species are the spectacle cobra the common crate the saw scale viper and the russell's viper right now that it is good that we get to see the pictures of the snake as we talk about it right spectacle cobra as we all know this is the one which is one of the most iconic of indian snakes because of its ability to uh, flare open its hood and then we have the common crate which is black snake with uh, thin white cross bands on its body right the one on the bottom left that is a common crate and then we have the russell's viper the one in the bottom right where you have a very thick and fat bodied snake with a series of chain like markings on the top that is called the russell's viper right and then the species of snake which is seen in the above picture that is called the saw scale viper so it is these four species which are collectively responsible for the large number of snake bite and snake bite statistics particularly fatalities in india right and it is these features which make them uh, highly medically important snakes they are widespread they are fairly common they often occur near human habitation where there are highly likely chances of human snake encounters they have highly toxic and potent venom frequencies of bites are also too high and the tendency for this snake to bite is also very high so all these features typically combine together to make these four species i repeat the spectacle cobra the common crate the russell's viper and the soft scale viper together called as the big four major venomous snakes of our country because these are the widespread and common highly dangerous venomous snakes of our country next slide please yes right so what venom actually is we discussed it fairly and uh, what is the, what are the other uh, anatomical features accompanying venoms and venom gland that's what we are going to see in the subsequent slides it has been established that venom has been secreted by glands called as venom glands just how, just similar to the way how we have salivary glands and uh, these are located in the mouth of the snake below and behind the eye that is in the temporal lobe of the head that's where the venom gland is situated and it can be described as a modified saliva it just saliva with a with a with a deadly twist with all those toxins and other uh, uh, features put in right its purpose uh, we talked about it it is about self defense and it is also about the uh, digestion right venom varies within the same species geographically that is venom of one same species found in one part of the country is found to differ from the another population of the same species that's occurring elsewhere within the country these are some of the new research findings that are present in the field of venomics in india and even newborn uh, snakes venom is often potent enough to be lethal for adult human beings next slide please next slide please yeah he has left sir he will rejoin again okay 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 that's fine sir that's fine sir sir uh, tamil sir uh, sir can you able to see the slides how yeah, now, now now i am able to see the slides I think okay, some sir. technical glitch okay yeah yeah, okay. yeah. so uh, types of venom venom is of various types each peculiar to certain groups of snakes and often it has a correlation ship with the habits of the snake as well right so it has both toxic and non toxic components that is one information we need to know and most of the snake venom is made up of proteins right that's how that uh, it amounts to almost 90% of the snake venom by dry bite that has enzymes and mostly protein and proteases that's the major component of snake venoms 
it can be broadly classified into cytotoxins which are toxins that are uh, that are uh, those that are responsible for causing necrosis causing lot of cell death and tissue damages these are cytotoxins and then we have neurotoxins that are uh, targeting the cns or the central nervous system of the uh, of the of the prey species they impair the nervous system and then we have cardiotoxins which directly act on the heart and causes impairment of heart and then we have myotoxins which target the muscles of the animals this is found mainly in the sea snakes so most of the myotoxins are present in sea snakes cardiotoxins are present in some vipers cytotoxins and hemotoxins are both present in uh, predominantly in vipers and to some extent in, in cobras neurotoxins is predominantly present in the crate venom and to a large extent it is also present in the cobra and king cobra venom this is how the types of snakes are distributed types of venoms are distributed among the species among the various venomous snake species like this right so the fangs and venom gland just a peep into the anatomy of the snake's head vipers have what is called as this solenoglyphous fangs that is a long cursive and foldable fang that is present in most of the vipers in the contrary for elapids we have a short fixed fang called as the proteroglyphous fangs this is the two types of front fangs that are found in snakes the picture shown here is a, that of a russell's viper that has long cursive foldable fangs and the next slide shows that of the a cobra an indian cobra which shows the short fixed front fang these are the two different kinds of fangs present in venomous snakes and the venom gland the, the picture shown on top figure b that shows the presence of venom gland in the temporal lobe of the head of a snake and the presence of fang towards its anterior end towards the uh, end of the mouth towards the snout tip we have the fangs and in the back of the eye and behind the eye we have the venom gland a venom duct that connects the fangs and the venom gland that's the, the duct is the one that conveys the venom that is secreted in the gland it transports the venom through the duct and it reaches the fangs from the fang a bleeding wound is created through the bite and the venom is injected into the blood stream of the either the prey species or the uh, adversary or its enemy this is the act of biting and this is the anatomy of the venomous snake's head next slide please right so it's just a textual representation of whatever we discussed in previous slides we can move on to the next slide please right okay uh we have lots of other muscles and tissues and ligaments which come into play and uh, they effectively contribute to the proper bite and envenomation by a venomous snake it also has accessory glands in the back of the upper jaw and it also has venom canal which delivers the venom from the duct through the uh, poison fangs into the blood stream right so fangs are nothing but hollow they act as hypodermic needles they are nature's needles just like how we are injecting a syringe in a needle and how doctor induces an administration of injection that is the same way that's the same exactly the same as the case with a venomous bite as well right snakes have venomous snakes have hollow front fangs and they again have a venom duct which collects them to the gland so during the bite that's how it get injected into the blood stream okay next slide please right so there is one unique snake in parts of indonesia and in malaysia that's called as the long glanded coral snake which has a gland that is so long as as has been shown in this picture it extends to almost half of its entire body length right this is one of the most unique snakes uh, in the world and because of its very long glands it is it, uh, it also has the ability to deliver more amount of venom when compared to a, a, a normal kind of a snake typically as i shown you in the previous slides and pictures the venom gland is very much restricted to the head region and doesn't extend beyond the head right so this is one species which has extraordinarily long venom glands like shown in this photograph yeah and we also have reserve fangs that is how we have a kind of a, a
car tires right we have one reserve tire when something gets wrong with the four wheels right so, so in on a similar line snakes also have reserve fangs if by any chance one of the fangs that functional gets broken it will gradually get replaced by the reserve fang that's the concept of reserve fang that can be that is shown in the picture to the left yeah next slide please next slide please this slide yeah good uh, so these are the general symptoms of snake bite these are all guidelines and this whole document was prepared by the world health organization who which is giving a lot of guidelines to doctors who treat uh, snake bite victims and it is it is based on their guidelines which is regionally specific for our country for india we are having a guideline that is for south asian region so south asian regions who guidelines state all these factors as the major impediments or symptoms of snake bite right one important uh, symptom that would that would r rather give away very easily that we are bitten by a venomous snake is vomiting within a short while after the bite if the person vomits that means some sort of venomous snake has bitten the person and he immediately needs urgent medical attention right we just talked about the different kinds of venoms of snakes and similarly the consequences and the symptoms also differ greatly from species to species essentially because of the differences in their venom composition dizziness fainting increased thirst and headache these are all symptoms that are associated with neurotoxic bites right that is bites from cobras and crakes it is these species which cause this kind of symptoms including blurness of vision all these symptoms are caused by the uh, neurotoxic bites convulsions loss of coordination weakness muscular symptom these are associated with the myotoxins or the sea snake bites right and uh, breathing difficulty advanced symptoms of uh, envenomation by neurotoxic snakes like cobras and crakes other skin sites bleeding spots numbness tingling sensation swelling discoloration burning sensation and bleeding these are all symptoms which are very much prevalent in viper bites okay viper bites have hemotoxic uh, venom and hemotoxin causes this rapid pulse blood pressure severe shock all these associated with the heart cardiotoxins and hemotoxin present in uh, the venoms of say russell's viper or saw scale viper these are responsible for generation of these kinds of symptoms in snake bite patients yeah next slide please right so for neuromus neurotoxic symptoms the neuromuscular junction that is the junction between the uh, the actual neuron or nerve cells and the muscle cells that gets impaired that junction is disconnected because of the action of the neurotoxic venom so that whatever command that our nerves give that is not able to be picked up or responded by the muscles this is technically known as paralysis that is this uh, whole uh, issue of disjunction or stoppage or the lack of traffic or coordination between the uh, nerve cells and the muscle cells that leads to complete paralysis of the patient and when paralysis happens paralysis of not just limbs not just the hands or feet or other body parts it is also of internal organs lungs get paralyzed diaphragm gets paralyzed breathing becomes impaired lack of breathing leads to death that is how death is brought about by bites by venomous uh, i mean neurotoxic venom such as that of cobras and crates next slide please hemotoxin that is present in vipers cause a different set of problems and consequences including rapid swelling discoloration extensive bleeding also hemorrhage internal hemorrhage and internal bleeding external bleeding and uh, you know uh, change of the viscosity of the blood change of blood ph change of blood viscosity change of the consistency of the blood lot of capillary damages and other blood vessel issues all these things happen because of the viper bites tiny blood clots happen all the all along the 
blood vessels inside the blood vessels we have lots of tiny blood clots and uh, and then the patient is unable to live because there is uh, so much of change in the uh, chemistry and composition of blood that a lot of uh, uh, damage happens to heart and then the breathing stops the heart stops beating and the person dies this is the case with the viper bites generally other things being constant uh, death happens more quickly more rapidly in case of neurotoxic bites than when compared to the hemotoxic bites yeah next slide please okay and these are some of the factors which affect the severity of the bite the health and the uh, condition general conditions of both the snake as well as the victim seasonal variations if it is a wet season with a lot of moisture around chances are the venom of the snake is going to be far more dilute when compared to the peak summer months when the venom is going to be highly concentrated skin shedding cycle as i told you snakes uh, shed their skin i think we have not discussed this point before as we all know snakes are ectothermic animals they shed their skin and uh, snakes do it very dramatically because they leave away their cast or excise is all in one piece right that's how we get to know the snakes shed their skin that is the means of their growth that's how they grow right and skin shedding cycle also impairs the vision of the snake and it is because of that uh, vulnerability that snakes tend to be irritable and more aggressive when it is in skin shedding cycle right allergic complex and reactions of the victim mental state and behavior of the victim we all know that um, the more we exert ourselves after a snake bite the more we get afraid after the situation after the snake bite these are circumstances which are going to aggravate the problems of envenomation right we have to be much more calm and composed after a bite so as to leave through the bite right excessive movement of the bitten limb we shouldn't move but keep it very still fear and anxiety have to be completely avoided bite sight this is one important feature very very important feature right the site of the bite where the bite has happened imagine a person uh, who is walking on walking he doesn't see a snake he stepped on the snake in dark and got bitten on the feet this is a much safer way of snake bite if the person happens to be sleeping on the floor right a snake was crawling around nearby and by chance he took a bite on its face or on his neck or chest then that is a much more serious snake bite simply because of its proximity to vital organs and body parts yeah next slide please right so how is snake bite uh, being treated it is treated by the polyvalent anti snake venom serum or the asv serum as we know it okay how is the asv prepared it is prepared by extracting the venom of the snake diluting it into great dosages and injecting it into horses or any other large animal which has a very good blood volume and which is also domestic in nature so we chose horses so gradually we include we inject minute quantities of diluted venom so this venom is a mixture of all the four venomous snakes the cobra the great the russell's viper and the soft scale viper so venom samples of all these four species are mixed in a certain proportion and then diluted and then that diluted component is injected in gradual dosages very small dosages to horses after say one and after two years the horses develop antibodies against these venom toxins right and that is then given to us as anti venom serum this is how snake anti venom is being prepared and this is the only reliable cure or remedy for treating snake bite patients as of now in india next slide please right so in our country this is particularly in tamil nadu it is being prepared in the irla cooperative center which is somewhere close to the uh, somewhere close to madras somewhere close to uh, chennai city in <coughs> so here all the four venomous snakes the big four common venomous snakes cobra crates russell's viper and the soft scale viper are brought from the wild they are milked for their venom their venom is extracted and that extracted venom is processed how is the process going on what is the process about we discussed that in the previous slide so after that is done 
all these snakes are released safely in the wild. This is a very sustainable way of harvesting snake venom for the produce of anti-venom serum. This is done by the Irula Cooperative, which is run by Irula tribal uh, snake catchers who are indigenous people belonging to belonging to southern part of India, especially in Tamil Nadu state, and they have native expertise, native uh, knowledge and skill for tracking and handling snakes, including venomous snakes. Next slide, please. Right. So what are the alternative remedies? In the past, we have always had this kind of hearsay from very many people that there are herbs, there are stones, there is this, there is that. All these things have been uh, put, put up as remedies for snake bite. Right now, we lack research to either prove or disprove such statements. The only reliable cure or remedy for snake bite that is practicable in India today is the ASV, the anti-snake venom serum. Right? That is available in government hospitals. Any snake bite victim should urgently approach the government hospital and take the anti-venom serum treatment for treating the snake bite. Yeah. Next slide, please. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about the noise. That is it. We are pretty much done. I am happy to take any questions from the audience. And on behalf of Chennai Snake Park, I thank the uh, organization, Ayanada Chanakya Mal College in Sivagasi, as well as all the, all the virtual friends with whom we are having this discussion now. Thank you. Participants, this is uh, the question and answer session. If you have any queries, please ask your questions. You can unmute yourself and ask your questions. Participants. And this is the time for you. So you can unmute your mic and ask your questions. Any queries? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, madam. Yes, please. I am Pragati, a CG student biotechnology in Anjad. I have a doubt, sir. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, the biting of a snake can cause adverse uh, adverse effects. Series, can cause a death of the human, but the eating okay. of the venom can also have the same kind of reaction. Uh, actually, venom will get into work, especially when it mixes with the blood. A direct contact and mixture of venom with the blood is required for envenomation, right? If there is a bleeding wound on the bite of, or on, on any person and by chance snake venom enters or comes into contact with that blood, then it is as good as a snake bite, right? For venom to take effect, it has to get mixed with the blood of a person or, or any other animal. Only then will envenomation effectively happen, right? As long as, uh, I mean, as far as uh, swallowing or digesting it is concerned, um, for human beings, it has not been uh, studied simply because of the uh, ethical issues involved with doing such kinds of experiments in either in situ or ex situ conditions. And uh, theoretically speaking, yes, as long as there is no gastric ulcers or any other lacerations or bleeding wounds into the digestive alimentary canal of the person, hypothetically speaking, yes, uh, swallowing is not going to cause any uh, envenomation symptoms. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this. Welcome. Sir, I have a doubt. Yes, sir. sir I am Guru Bali. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, uh, for a snake bite victim, they start blood after in the snake bite area and spit the blood out. Was that helpful for the victim? Uh, sorry, sir. Could you please come again? I, I wasn't able to.
ஒரு <laughs> 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 right and uh, this cutting or sucking a wound from the bite side or tying tourniquets are all contraindicated these days we are not supposed to do any of those things we just need to reassure ourselves or the victim if it happens to be another person and call the ambulance and reach the government hospital with as anti venom treatment immediately yeah any more queries participants participants any other queries okay hope uh, so the participants have a good insight about uh, snake bites and uh, distribution of snake venom uh, snake uh, of india sir uh, thanks for your uh, great uh, time with us welcome and hope we will uh, join with you in future also sure uh, so uh, so before we move on to the concluding session i just want to uh, tell the participants that uh, sir is there a question in the chat box okay uh, can we differentiate venomous and non venomous snake bite can we differentiate venomous and non venomous snake bite yes not immediately after some time as i told you if there is uh, any vomiting or any nausea happening in the victim then it is definitely a venomous snake bite it's not a non venomous bite of course it will take some time for the venom to show itself and how it affects so it is always good to approach the hospital in case of any snake bite even if it is a non venomous bite it is the rule of the hospital to admit a suspected snake bite patient and keep him for 48 hours mandatorily for 48 hours under icu and only after that time and after having completely ruled out any possible envenomation can he be discharged from the hospital so it's good to seek medical attention in case of doubts hello yeah yeah uh, good afternoon ganesh husain here from hyderabad ah uh, good afternoon husain good afternoon husain yeah yeah uh, recently we were knowing that the cases of snake bite in india were 50000 but uh, another paper was there which was telling that there has been a record number of 1 lakh cases of deaths okay so okay. Uh, per annum so in northeast india so there are very very less institutes in india which are preparing snake venom so yeah. what would yeah. be the best from the government side like in preparation of anti venoms or bringing up some institutes or training up with the capacity building even the forest department doesn't know most of the places these snakes will be killed or people will be going into man animal conflict or something will be happening so what would be the best like establishment of institutions or capacity building what would be the best thing to come up with these is problems of snakes uh, by government in different states okay i think okay, this I is think this is something, something has to be taken up by uh, the policy makers as academicians we could inform the policy makers about the problems and we could always uh, uh, suggest them to go about these measures yeah so what are the measures, are the measures? centralizing the so called anti venom or treatment uh, uh, as well as, as, well as uh hosain could you please mute yourself yourself yeah uh decentralizing this anti venom uh, pro- production or venom extraction centers uh, as well as being much more uh, available being much more available for the rural sector these are things which are going to bring down snake bites and most of all creating awareness among the populations like 
people need to know particularly people in rural sector if they get to know that okay there is something called anti venom this is the treatment for snake bite we should not detour for a, a any quack medicine or doctors but go to directly to the government hospital for treatment if this message is clearly known by a lot of rural sector people then we can very well bring down snake bites and man animal conflict so we we very much uh, share your concerns and uh, we we also would like the policy makers to take cognizance of the situation and do the need work thank you okay thank you ganesh uh, we are having most of the institutes of these snake anti venom preparation or research or conservation organizations yeah. in many yeah. bigger bigger cities where mostly like snake bite or doesn't happen or the cases might not come so the places where it has happened like death cases or the case severity due to the snake bites there we don't have these uh, organizations the setup has to come up there what do you say about that sorry setup has to come up the organizations like your snake park or even in hyderabad friends of snakes our society it's in hyderabad okay. so in bigger cities we are having the organizations okay But whatever the problem snake bite the problem happens in village villages or forest uh, villages yeah that is exactly what i meant by when i say decentralization right we shouldn't keep everything restricted only to the big cities whereas the problem is happening out there in the villages we need to decentralize things so that the 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 beneficiaries are those who are in needy situation they get to help they get to receive this help and uh, timely help so that they can save their own lives and also save the lives of snakes and instead of killing them indiscriminately yeah okay thank you welcome any more queries gentlemen Can we? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, can we determine venomous and non-venomous uh, snake bites by without knowing the symptoms? If there is a suspected snake bite, it's good not to wait for symptoms or knowing these things, but just to approach hospital and start the. I mean, uh, get admitted to the hospital for. timely treatment immediately right if there is no venom or there is something called as dry bite even a venomous snake will bite and often not inject any venom into our blood stream that is called as a dry bite right even in case of dry bites that happens from a venomous snake like a cobra or a viper can you give a dry bite in such cases where there is no venom injected into the blood stream we we still should not take chances right it's always good to approach the hospital and get admitted for timely treatment as far as uh, theoretical things are concerned if the symptoms doesn't show up it means that no no venom has been injected and that will that in itself will discriminate the bites or consequences of a venomous bite as well as a non venomous bite yeah the the first and foremost of this is nausea and vomiting as i told you for a previous question Thank you, sir. sir. Welcome. Sir. Sir. Sir, one more doubt. Yes, sir. Please. Sir, how can we treat a snake bite with snake bite with him who don't know what kind of snake bite he? Yeah. Uh, we need not know the kind of snake which bit us. As I told you, we have four common venomous snakes, the big four venomous snakes, right? And that. anti venom is called as a polyvalent anti venom serum which will effectively address the bites of any of these four species and it is highly unlikely for a normal average indian citizen to get bit by any of the other groups of rarer venomous snake like king cobra pit viper or sea snakes and coral snake which i showed you in previous slides i think that answers your question thank you Hello. 
sir uh, sh should we conclude the session sir yeah if uh, yes sir if there is no okay uh, sir one more question oh, sir. i don't know act in case of yeah it was sent by i mean can't even a mark in case of snakes which affect, affect our, our nervous system anti venom will simply reverse all the symptoms caused by venom right for example in neurotoxic bites the symptom are going to be paralysis anti venom will reverse all the paralysis any more queries from the audience side uh i have a question uh, yes. already <clears throat> already you have mentioned that uh, the polyvalent anti venom is effective against the four medically uh, most common venomous snakes yes. but suppose suppose and in rare instances if a person gets bitten by uh, any other venomous snake of india which are not exactly among these four then what treatment options are available in that case any specific monovalent serum is available or is it purely symptomatic kind of a treatment can you please tell sir i think in that case it is going to be a purely symptomatic kind of uh, treatment because there is no such a monovalent anti venom that is being prepared at least in recent times till recent times uh, basically because it is it is it was not found to happen in so high a number which will warrant this kind of intervention which will warrant or which will uh, necessitate people to extract venom from that particular snake be it uh, say for example a banded crate or a monocle cobra or a king cobra or some species of pit vipers all these are venomous snakes of course they have lethal venom and they are found in india but just that they are much more rare and range restricted so the number or any probability of bites by such such cases has always been very very diminutive for government to take these kinds of interventions theoretically speaking yes it is a very very dangerous situation to be in yeah we do not have any species specific anti venom for such species other than the big four venomous snakes in india uh, actually uh, let me share a small personal experience that i had because i did some research work uh, on snake venom so my Please. personal my, my personal experience uh, suggests that uh, if i take a monocled cobra venom that uh, and if a person suppose gets uh, envenomed by this monocled cobra venom then this polyvalent anti venom can effectively fight with that so there is a significant amount of uh, cross reactivity between the monocled cobra venom and the spectacled cobra venom but unfortunately i am from west bengal unfortunately uh, when i did the same kind of uh, experiment with the banded crate venom i found surprisingly that uh, the polyvalent anti venom cannot really neutralize the banded crate venom because there is very less cross reactivity among the venom of common crate and banded crate that was my personal experience about a decade back so i am still very interested to know whether there has been any progress anywhere in india regarding uh, treatment of envenomation by this kind of things like banded crate or king cobra or sea snake that is why i asked okay sir sir this issue is termed as para specificity partly it addresses partly it doesn't addresses so this para specificity uh, as you rightly pointed out has been documented in a few but not all species of other venomous snakes and that being so we have no way of uh, categorically telling yes if this species bites you this anti venom is going to save you so that is the problem we are still facing i do share your concerns and i do hope that the policy makers will uh, do the needful and act accordingly thank you very much thank you for your wonderful presentation and clarifying my doubts as well thank you so welcome, much welcome sir welcome for your advice sir good afternoon sir good afternoon madam uh, sir i have a doubt uh, it's a simple only but i think it's essential like uh, at times we snake come comes into the locality where we are residing in how to rescue this snake and as well as protect us from their bites sir okay um, first thing that we need to understand is 
we cannot and we should not try to avoid snakes we can and we should try to avoid snake bites these are not synonymous terms these are very different things just by the presence of a snake around our homesteads we need not and we should not fret right that's the whole purpose of having such talks on snakes and our knowledge sharing going on about snakes in our country snakes cannot be avoided snake bites can very well be avoided right uh, just like how there are accidents happening but we are not scared simply by the presence of some bikes or cars parked in a parking lot right it is these vehicles which entail us into accidents but we know what happened wrong what went wrong what can be done to rectify that same thing also applies to snakes we shouldn't try to avoid snakes if we get to have some stray incidences of snakes coming into people's habitation there is always this uh, snake helplines by the forest department by the fire and rescue services and by other like minded organizations which are uh, who are there to handle this sort of situation and go for man snake conflict mitigation measures yeah. okay sir thank you sir any queries uh, sir i think uh, we shall conclude the session now and uh, people started to ask questions are what are the job roles available okay so uh, we are uh, participants Uh, thank you so much uh, thank you so much for your active participation throughout the session and uh, for your concern uh, we have uh, shared the feedback link as well as attendance code in the chat box of this google meet we once again uh, thank you for your uh, enthusiastic participation and uh, it's the right time for me to acknowledge the contribution of the resource person dr sr ganesh sir and hope you have all uh, noticed your invitation so uh, sir uh, can you name the snake in that invitation we have designed sir yeah that is uh, russell viper yeah so actually sir asked me to um, uh, give any indian born uh, snake in that invitation so i said him sir uh, it is very difficult for me to search copyright free images from the internet so sir himself came forward and uh, shared his own photographs for designing the invitation so that uh, starts the real involvement of a hepatologist thank you sir thank you for thank you very much for your uh, work and we acknowledge your uh, sharing and we acknowledge you for sharing your uh, photograph very important thing so and uh, so from the day one i mean uh, from the day we have planned we used to share uh, many things i used to ask many uh, uh, suggestions from sir he said yes he said go ahead so uh, thank you very much for your uh, understanding and thank you very much for your cooperation sir throughout uh, uh, organizing this program and i'm very thankful for your valuable presence and uh, and we acknowledge i mean from the college side we acknowledge your wonderful presentation and the thought provoking ideas on people have about uh, indian snake bites and distribution of venomous snakes in india thank you sir and uh, i thank once again as an organizing secretary i would like to thank uh, our management as well as our beloved principal for uh, having providing all the opportunities and providing all the infrastructural facilities for organizing this wonderful program thank you sir and i hope we will meet you in person once the pandemic situation is over very much yes yes thank you sir thank you for being with us thank you sir welcome sir Okay thank you